Okay. So yes, uh, so I just covered the section where I talked about uh, the family of God and how we must have a son mentality versus the servant mentality because a servant uh, works for a reward, but a son works because he belongs. A son has a greater commitment as compared to a servant and a son receives the inheritance while a servant is only uh, looking for a reward. Okay, so now we will uh, look a little deeper at the characteristics of people who carry the son mentality in the family of God or the local church. How, what does it look like? Okay, so it'll, it will come through as um, them being faithful. So they will demonstrate faithfulness. They will be aligned to the vision of the family. They will be aligned to the direction in which, you know, when I say family, we're talking about the local church, the direction in which the local church is moving. Okay, uh, But if it's a somebody who is thinking like a servant, when the going gets rough, they might just throw in the towel and say, I think I prefer to be a part of another community and just move on. So they may not remain aligned to the vision or, or committed to the vision and the direction in which the local church is moving. So faithfulness, faithfulness is what sons and daughters demonstrate in the family of God. Okay. And uh, sons and daughters are people who will demonstrate like-mindedness. Okay, now Paul, when he talked about Timothy, he said that, no, here is one individual who is just like me. Okay, he thinks like me. I think it's good to read uh, the passage given in our notes here. I'm on page 62, Philippians 2, verses 19 to 22. Can somebody please read this passage? Uh, can I read? Yes, yes, please, Charles, go ahead. Philippians chapter 2, verse 19 through 22. But I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you shortly, that I also may be encouraged when I know your state. For I have no one like-minded who will sincerely care for your state. For all seek their own, not the things which are of Christ Jesus. But you know this proven character. That as a son, with his father, he served with me in the gospel. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Charles. Thank you for reading that. So, um, Paul, while talking about Timothy, you know, he, he gives a very good report about the attitude with which Timothy served. So, he says that he was like-minded, like-minded, uh, and the, the meaning of that you know, from the Strong's Dictionary given here in our notes is of a similar spirit. Okay, So with a similar spirit, Timothy served together with Paul and he did not seek his own. Right? He had uh, uh, like genuine concern for the purposes of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's why Timothy served. And then you know, Paul also talks about his proven character. Uh, and he says that Timothy served like a son together with him in the gospel. So that is the manner in which somebody who has a son mentality will serve in the church. Now, they, they serve with the same vision that the leadership of the house has. They will steer in the same direction as the leadership of the house. They will serve because of love for God and the family, family of God. So it will not be an obligation. You know, you gave me the task. I'm doing it. Where is my appreciation? Where is my reward? The son doesn't think in that manner. But he's doing it out of love. He's doing it for the benefit of the family. A son or a daughter will reflect. Uh, first of all, they will understand the heart of their leaders. They will also reflect the heart of their leaders. Okay? Because we know that we are we're not here for ourselves. We are here for the common vision that God has put on this household, on this local body. So a son and a daughter will think like that and not think about, you know, what, what is in the bargain for me in this. Okay. Uh, and also uh, a son and a daughter while serving in the house of God, you know, they, they will be mindful not to draw the attention of the people like whoever comes into the family, 
and a son and a daughter will not say oh okay come now you follow me okay it's all about me no but a son and a daughter they are faithful to the vision they are faithful to the community they are faithful to the leadership and they will point even the newcomers right in that same direction so that they too can be a part of the family and they too can belong in the house of god and they can serve as a son and a daughter so you see how valuable it is for the church to understand that it is a family and if the leadership treats the people in this way and the people also develop a son mentality uh if that's what god wants because that is how god's family should be it's not just about doing stuff it's not we are talking about the kingdom of god right in the other course but kingdom of god is is not just uh, you know everybody do your part uh, and everybody just do the great commission and that's what god wants and that's it you know period amen it doesn't work like that we are also a family at the same time that's why we said you know there are Ten facets that we will discuss about the the house of God. All these facets, uh, sort of, kind of superimpose, you know, one one on the other. And uh, uh, the church is it, it is such a beautiful place, you know. And the church uh, is supposed to be right. If we walk in all these things, then uh, it is supposed to be a wonderful place where people will experience God powerfully and people will also enjoy uh, the fellowship that God has provided uh, in other believers for uh, them so uh, it, it's important for us to understand and teach uh, the people and also go by the same teaching ourselves as leaders so we talked about the son and the uh, servant mentality now a son is also someone who will be willing to take correction with the right spirit okay obviously uh, wherever there is progress there is a uh, need for um, uh, growth there will be correction now how how is it possible that absolutely no correction comes our way there will be a lot of uh, you know correction that would be needed for growing children so similarly in the family of god whenever correction is uh, is uh, um, you know meted out to a person and the bible teaches us how to do that in a loving manner someone who has a son mentality will be able to receive it with a good spirit but if someone carries a servant mentality so that person can be easily offended and they'll be like you know why who are you to ask me or you know why should i be accountable to you that kind of an attitude um, uh, can show up but when we are walking with a son mentality we know okay correction is coming our way uh, fine you know what are the changes that i need to make how can i grow further how can i be better a son thinks like that so that is how a son would behave and also a son and a daughter in the family is somebody who honors father and mother okay now uh, it is possible that in the uh, local church now we're talking more specifically in the context of the local church so fathers and mothers uh, are terms referred to uh, more mature people you could say pastors uh, ministry leaders or even if they don't have a title or a role somebody who is mature in the lord who who is able to you know uh, impart into the lives of others so, okay so when there are fathers and mothers in the house of god it is possible that they make mistakes okay obviously nobody is perfect now if someone in the church has a son or a daughter mentality they will understand that oh okay my leader has made a mistake uh, and you could also deal with the issue you can address the issue in a in an honorable way with your leader and that's about it you know but a son will not go around telling the whole world you no know, look at my father he's like this he's like this he's like this sort of you know putting them down and talking about them in a condescending way to others and not forgiving your your father or mother not forgetting what they did but you would be one who would who would you know deal with the matter quickly and then you know uh, forget about it and not shame your father or your mother so only a son will do that but a servant will be quick to to make a big deal out of uh, the uh, mistakes 
or the errors made by leaders okay and there is an example given here from the life of noah noah in genesis chapter 9 we read that he got drunk and it's possible that it was a genuine mistake because uh, he discovered wine in uh, for the first time because we don't read about him getting drunk again uh, so when this happened you no know, he was naked okay and uh, his son saw that but you notice how ham saw the father's nakedness uh, and he went and he told his brothers about it however um, shem and japhet took a garment walked backwards and covered the nakedness of their father so it's like an example of uh, we are not saying that we must uh, push the mistakes of leaders under the carpet and behave like they never made a mistake no there are right ways of dealing with it and i think we will address that in kingdom builders course uh, but what we are pointing out here is not like publicizing it and putting them down without without dealing with the matter in a proper way okay so uh, the person who has a son mentality will will cover up but a person who has a servant mentality will make it worse okay uh, so uh, uh, that is something here and again when we are talking about mistake we are referring to things which may happen like as a one off thing Now, if somebody is in continual sin they are unwilling to change that's a different matter okay and that needs to be addressed uh, separately so this will be the manifestation of a son or a daughter in the family of god okay now shri kumar has a question here uh, says in case leadership does not have a vision of mentorship in that case how can we move ahead okay so um, shri kumar the leadership needs to have a uh, a vision of mentorship if you recall when we talked about a strong local church we talked about the continuity of the church okay and if the leaders the current leaders are not they don't have a plan to invest in younger people then the church will not like with this generation all the good things that god is doing basically it's like you know it's like that um, what do you call that thing oh. uh, you pour the wine into what is that garment called i'm not getting the word right new wine skin wine skin, wine skin. Wine skin. yes yes thank you yes so wine skin so it's it's like a wine skin you have to keep it prepared for the next generation if we don't prepare that then even if god is pouring out the anointing in a new way in a fresh way the younger people will not be ready the wine skin will not be ready and uh, god's work will come to an end unfortunately so pastor in that case uh, what a person can do like uh, if the leadership is not having that kind of a vision or a mentorship or um, like um, they are only looking for the they are uh, they are only for focusing on the church growth but if they are not focusing on the mentorship and the to raise the uh, next level or for a, as you said for a next generation they are not investing so in that case uh, how to continue uh, like um, the, the the like the things what we are discussing now so how can uh, you know as a person like me how can i go ahead with it and uh, then uh, can i continue with that or do i have to sorry to ask that you know find another option where i can be mentored in the right way or uh, because of uh, look like you know, when i decided to serve god so that was my question thank you pastor yeah thank you shri kumar it's a it's a difficult um thing actually what you're asking and the answer is not mm -hmm. straight forward uh, mm -hmm. but what i would do i could tell you that i would consider the season of my life uh, and i would see what god wants me to do in that season okay and be faithful where i am planted at the in the given moment i know that my leadership is not making any investment uh, in the lives of the younger people but i would pray for them because uh, you know that's the most i can do okay but if if at all you know you are in a position of greater influence where you can talk to your leadership you can uh, discuss about these matters in a in a sort of a you know peaceful way then i think you can do that but uh, if i am a person in a church and i don't have influence maximum i can only pray and say lord you know let let this be possible 
uh, and hope that it happens but if it just does not happen over a period of time and uh, i feel that okay uh, you know uh, my my season here is over and things are not really uh, moving in the right direction uh, then i i may need to move and i'm telling you from what i've done actually <laughs> so yeah thank you first <laughs> yeah sure Yeah, yeah. Thanks a lot. Thanks. So Thank please you. make your decision. That's I'm not yeah, asking sure, you. Sure. I'm praying for being it true. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for so, being a true pastor. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> thank you, Charles. But uh, see, I, I, it's not like uh, pointing a blame at someone. Uh, even like uh, one church that I attended before APC, and the reason I started attending that church is because we moved our house. I was very deeply a part of another church which was quite far away from my new home so we couldn't travel all the way so i had to join a local church which was close to my house there was no other option so in that season of my life because that was the only option left for me i continued there i did my best to be as faithful as possible and whatever programs they had i engaged in all of that i did my best even to reach out like okay how can i serve this and that everything but it came to a point where after doing my part the best that is possible uh something was just not clicking something was not clicking uh, and i felt like you know xyz it would be nice if those things were also considered but as i told you i was not in this church for a very long time so i did not have a say okay so then i just prayed about it and prayed about it and prayed about it and in a very very strange sort of a way uh i got introduced to apc in a very strange way my father was in the hospital uh you know again far away from where i live right now and when he was in the hospital i wanted to visit a church and the closest church then was apc and i got connected to the church i got connected to the people and i felt like i belonged there and once that happened it's i just became a part of apc you know and the season just changed for me it was that uh, that that's exactly what happened so okay just to clarify so shikumar yeah please uh, pray think and you you see how you uh, pass sure thank you thank you yes okay all right thank you uh, so we're talking about son sons fathers mm, and uh, having the right mentality okay now coming to fathers and mothers uh, interesting because yesterday only abhishek had this question in the mentoring hour uh, fathers and mothers in the house of god so who are these fathers and mothers uh, basically people who can uh, who can nurture younger believers into growth so if they are able to do that then we refer to them as fathers and mothers so what kind of growth should a believer go through so they must be discipled for their own personal lives for their spiritual walk uh, and also for equipped for ministry okay so a father and a mother will lead them on that growth journey and also be willing to release them at the right time so an individual who can do that for another individual is called as a father or a mother so that is spiritual fathering basically nurturing a um, uh, a believer in the lord now is this part of the bible did it happen yes it happened a lot it happened in the early church you have a great example of uh, paul the apostle who mentored so many people like timothy titus and uh, several other believers at corinth Ga galatia uh, thessalonica and he also uh, refers you know to people as his sons or children so he looked at them like that he invested in them like that and obviously it's only when you do things like that that the next generation will have will will carry your legacy and they can continue the work otherwise what happens once apostle paul is gone everything is gone with apostle paul but thankfully you know he had mentored people uh and you know it's it's important for uh, there to be fathers and mothers in the body of christ now we can also look at it in in a in the larger sense okay not just the local church uh, you 
we we also have fathers and mothers in the body of Christ. So many people that we look up to, right? Like in our nation, in our city, we've learned from them. They've blessed our lives. They nurture us in the in the uh, in in our walk with the Lord. So it, it's important for there to be fathers and mothers. And for the fathers and mothers and the sons and daughters to have a good relationship. Now Malachi chapter four, there is a, a verse there which says God says that if the hearts of the fathers are not turned to the children and the hearts of the children to the father, then what happens? You know, he says that I will I will put a curse on the land. So the relationship between fathers and mothers and and sons and daughters, it has to be a good one. Okay. It has to be like, you know, one of love. Okay. And that's what God is looking for. So he's not looking for a strained relationship where, where the children are against the parents. So even when it comes to the spiritual side of things, spiritual fathers and mothers and sons and daughters, it has to be a loving relationship. And we, le we learn from our fathers and mothers. We, we understand they're not perfect, but you know, we take what they impart into our lives. We have our goals, you know, to, to grow in the Lord and make them proud. So it, it is a relationship of, of love, just like a uh, natural family. And these fathers and mothers, uh, they also pass on a spiritual inheritance. You know, sometimes we, we may think, oh, I'm serving with this uh, man of God, a woman of God, and uh, what am I going to get in return? That's a servant mentality. But when you have a son and a daughter mentality, you know, the blessings are spiritual. Like you may be serving faithfully and thinking I'm not getting any reward. You know, God is transferring anointing on your life. God is transferring, you know, grace on your life, which is on the life of those that you are serving honorably. And, you know, you're, you're committed, you're faithfully serving. So these are all spiritual things that we cannot see. And only a son mentality can give you those things. You know, those things can be imparted in us when we have a son mentality. But with, uh, you know, uh, when we think, only about reward and all, uh, then, you know, uh, it, it doesn't work out. So that genuine and a beautiful uh, relationship uh, is important and uh, it must be developed both ways, okay? Both from the uh, spiritual mentor side as well as from those who are being mentored. So how is it possible to establish this kind of a healthy relationship? So there are some practical keys here. One is you establish a personal relationship right, with the uh, person that you want to nurture. Now, again, here at APC, we, we insist uh, as far as possible to, to men mentor men, women mentor women, you know, just so you don't get into uh, uh, like, you know, difficult situations. So we kind of limit ourselves to that. That, that's not to say that, you know, there are not okay, there, there are no occasions when we have to speak into the life of like, you know, let's say some brother in church, and uh, I have to speak into that person's life. Yeah, there's a way of doing it uh, in the right way. Uh, but yeah, those are kind of one off things. But as far as possible, you know, what I would do is, if there's something, you know, a, a lot that I can't do, I just put them on, like I would say, Pastor Jake's, here's this person, can you connect with them? And can you just, you know, uh, uh, talk to this person, and then pastor would connect, or, you know, uh, the other pastors would connect, and, you know, then it, it goes from there. So you establish a personal relationship as far as possible with the person of the same gender. And then uh, when they get comfortable with you, you know, that's when they will be willing to open up, you can speak comfortably into their lives. Okay, then the next thing we're talking about mentoring, we're not just talking about, you know, having a friendly relationship. Uh, but when it comes to mentoring, we say that for a mentor, it's important to go, it's important to discuss things beyond the superficial surface level. Okay, now this doesn't mean trying to get a control or knowing everything about their personal lives. No, 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 it's not at all to dictate terms to them, because they are a grown, you know, individual who has their own mind. So they are free to do whatever they want to do. But what we're saying is beyond that superficial connection, if we are at a place where we can address issues of, okay, how's your spiritual life? Uh, you know, these are the ways in which you could strengthen yourself spiritually, equip your yes. inner man. I just, okay, there's an echo. Yeah. Uh, they should also be at a place where they 
are able to receive these things or you know what about we said uh, receiving correction with the right spirit so if we only talk about superficial things how are you doing how is your ministry and sometimes when we talk only about ministry and gifting the uh, conversations will be nice ah uh, ministry is going very well yeah yeah i'm teaching five classes you know it's it's amazing anointing grace good things but what if some other areas are addressed in my life okay uh, about um, let's say something wrong with finances you know that that i'm engaged in now if my mentor just says hey nancy what about that you know what happened why did you do this i may not like it but when there's that equation uh, the mentor can bring in correction rebuke discipline okay or let's say marriage you know some uh, person who's ministering ministry is going awesome but there are issues in the marriage but as a mentor if if at all there is there, there is that relationship of comfort where the mentor can say hey what's happening you know I, I, is there something i can help with or uh, what's going on you know uh, you you seem to be having some difficulty in this area it's not easy to discuss uh, about other matters but it's very helpful because then that builds the whole person okay and once again i'm saying this is not to interfere this is this is just to uh, be there for that person uh, and also help the person grow in all areas of their life so going past the superficial surface level relationship uh, helps a lot in mentoring then uh, exercising positive influence and holding people accountable so <laughs> there are times when uh, you know like early on there were you know multiple things uh, that i was involved in and some of those tasks needed me to travel so i still remember one day uh, there there was some five days of prayer going on in church and uh, uh, i had an appointment with with somebody outside uh, and i just excused myself from the prayer okay and i got this message from pastor lancy where are you i'm like oh my goodness what's happening you know uh, so basically like i understood that i have to be accountable i didn't attend the prayer uh, so what am i going to do then i explained to him i told him i'm so sorry pastor but then he's like remember we had planned that everyone should be part of the prayer and you could have uh, planned this appointment for another time so i was like yeah actually i could have done that but uh, i'm sorry i i didn't uh, do it so then i kind of corrected myself i was like okay fine you know, next time even if it's like a really important appointment then i don't plan it when our i mean this prayer was special like because you know it it was meant for the for for all the congregation and especially the staff to be together and i kind of uh, didn't do that so uh, you know things like that where people can actually hold you accountable and uh, it's not easy but it's very helpful because it you learn so many things and you grow right uh, when you learn from people who uh, have i mean they are demonstrating those things in their own lives so uh, that seriousness like you you kind of learn you pick it up you correct yourself so that positive influence you know that that can be exercised over people's life so uh, we can hold people accountable for their spiritual growth conduct daily lifestyle and even ministry okay and then deal with the person's character more and not just the gifting and i've already talked about it otherwise what happens people can hide hide behind the gifting we don't want that the whole person needs to be um, ministered to okay so and when we are dealing with you know issues that uh, people have the people whom we are mentoring uh, the fathers and mothers should also do it with a true and a sincere heart to build the person up not to pinpoint their their uh, uh, you know errors and insufficiencies inadequacies and make them feel worse that's not the reason why uh, we want to be doing this but we want to build the whole person that is the intention then uh, encourage people to present for themselves okay uh, so this basically means that mm, yeah we nurture people and what if the person that we are mentoring becomes better than us okay there can be an insecurity within us 
like you know the way Saul when he he heard about David uh, and the songs that people were singing for David he just wanted to get rid of David but fathers and mothers a true father and a mother will be proud to hear that hey you know the person that uh, I have been working with all these years is doing better than me they have accomplished greater things than me so a father and a mother should encourage people to press in and not become insecure that you know this person might uh, reach higher heights okay and then uh, train people for their god appointed destiny uh, yeah so this means that you know in a local church it can be very tempting to position people the way you want it okay because the church needs that now the service needs that now so you're getting them to do what you want but that's not how mentoring should be. We have to see God's heart uh, for what God wants for that person. What is the anointing on that person's life? And based on that, we mentor them. Based on that, you know, we we lead them in the things of God. Then what happens? You know, maybe you know they grow in the anointing, and who who knows? They might be in one of the fivefold ministry uh, offices. So as the person grows, you see that let's say a teaching um, anointing over that person's life god may say okay right now i want you to release this person because i want them to minister in other places so a father and a mother is willing to do that okay a father and a mother is willing to do that yeah thanks thanks tarun Th tarun's put a comment here jesus said you will do greater things than these yes how uh, yeah wonderful that we have the son of god expecting us to do better right then whatever he did and he basically spoke about you know the supernatural uh, so yeah we we must have that big heart okay all right so uh, i think i will uh, there is uh, the last section here about christian community but i will not rush into it uh, so let me stop here maybe we can discuss a couple of things and then close for today Anything along the lines of son mentality, servant mentality, fathers, mothers? Now let's take that up. Um, sorry. I uh, have yes, a... yes, Samuel. Yeah. Um, so something that I was thinking was, um, especially in terms of fathers, mothers, um, or slash mentors, um, I think uh, the requirement for fathers and mothers to to learn to be uh, good mentors, which uh, a lot of times comes from feedback, is what I'm thinking. You know, let's say I'm mentoring someone, and uh, I don't know uh, because I I, I I don't know from where I remember this quote, but uh, I, the quote goes something like, "We judge ourselves by our intentions, but others judge us by our actions." So while, you know, my intentions might be right, like I want this person to grow spiritually, so I'm rebuking him, disciplining him, giving him feedback for his spiritual growth. But, uh, you know, but my intention might be, you know, clouded with my action, which, uh, which the person may not be receiving correctly. And I would not know that until this person, my mentee, tells me, you know, the way you're, like it's not helping me. Uh, and, and for the father or mother to, take that gracefully say like, okay, I need to uh, correct the way that I, my intentions are correct, like I, I want to do it, but I need to modify accordingly. Because again, I'm um, thinking uh, everybody's different and what, what may work for one person may not work for another person. Some, uh, some like direct uh, on the face feedback and some like, uh, some prefer sandwiched feedback. Uh, uh, you know, so so uh, I so so I think uh, the overall is if you could comment a little bit on uh, how do fathers and mothers grow in their role, uh, or, or or from a normal uh, person, how uh, how do you mature to a mentor? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so Samuel, see, to become a father or a mother. Uh, those individuals have also gone through the journey 
they have also grown they have made mistakes learned from their mistakes uh, and, and that's how they right now are in a place where they are able to speak into the lives of others okay so uh, i think there's uh, yes speak the truth in love uh, in the example that you gave um, if we do our best to speak the truth in love and uh, uh, the feedback you get from the individual is no you know the way you did it it wasn't like i'm not able to receive from it then you learn you learn from that experience uh, and uh, you see how you can improve uh, in the way you are communicating as a father or a mother uh, but i guess that's as much as you can do because sometimes what happens people are it is possible that the person that we are mentoring is not willing to receive no matter how you want to communicate it because the ball is in their court and if they say that no you know uh, you didn't say it in the right way or um, i can't do this then i think from that point you can only check your heart as a mentor and and, and see that i did my best i did what i whatever i knew was right and i did my best i was willing to correct myself but beyond that it's not my responsibility anymore it has to be the person okay who uh, who has received the feedback or whatever who needs to actually do it so the point i'm making is see there is a growth process there's a learning process even at the at the end of the mentor and one should be willing to learn mm, right um this also you know with what you said just now i'm 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 thinking, um, or in my head, I'm defining a mentor as a person who doesn't easily give up on the mentee. Uh, you no. know, and like where the whole world may give up, say like you're a hopeless case. But I think a mentor is someone who, who, who takes a very long time to do that. Probably even a lifetime. Uh, you know. Yeah. So, so I, I, yeah. Yeah. so uh yes uh, samuel i do agree with you uh but i'll just make a very quick point because we've run out of time also uh, i see that you know a, a mentor should have that heart uh, uh, to cover the the mentee like at all times but you know the reality is the mentee's response is everything now if somebody does not want to receive you can chase them your whole life you will not see any growth okay so that's the flip side of things yeah so anyway yeah no, 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 thank you anyway, yeah sure, i mean sure, i'm sure. i still would want to debate but but i know in the interest of time uh... debate huh? yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay okay we we'll see how how uh, that can be done right we right. can see how to discuss okay so okay. with that yeah thank, thank you, you thank samuel and thank you everyone i don't want to take your time i know you have another class to go to uh, so let me just quickly pray and we we will wrap up today's class Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for giving us this time together to learn from your Word. Uh, and Father God, we just place ourselves at your feet, Lord. Even as we, uh, Lord, uh, learn about these things, help us, Lord, in our lives, in our churches, Lord, in the kingdom work that we do, Father God, to, to, uh, uh, Lord. Lord, be a blessing, Lord, and be examples, Father God. Lord, thank you once again, Lord, uh, for all that you're teaching us. We honor you. Uh, we commit the rest of the day into your hands. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Okay. Take care, everyone. God bless you. Amen. Bye. Thank you, ma'am. Amen. Thank, thank you, you ma'am. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. God bless. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Bye. 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 Love Bye. you. <laughs> Bye everyone. Mm -hmm. Bye bless.